So this absolute value equation is a little bit more complicated, but it's not that much complicated. If you think back to the properties that we just wrote, we said that the inside stuff is either going to equal this number or it's going to equal what? The opposite of that, right? So in order for an absolute value to equal 5, that means that the stuff on the inside <coughs> must equal 5 or what? The stuff on the inside has to equal negative 5, right? Does that make sense? So what I have, uh, I've got two equations. So solve each of these equations and tell me what you get. X equals positive 15 or X equals what? Positive 5. Notice it's not a plus or minus thing here. And there are, I guess, some similarities with what we see with the square root property. And actually, the square root property <coughs> is connected to this guy. These guys are connected. I can show it to you if you want. But you won't like what happens. If I plug in 15, just check this to make sure. What's 15 minus 10? And the absolute value of 5 is 5. That's cool. Here, x is 5. Plug in 5. 5 minus 10 is negative 5. Do you all agree? All right. Should be so easy. Really, the end, really, when you look at that, it's the absolute value of x minus 10 equals plus or minus 5. No, the absolute value does not equal plus or minus. You, but you could say x minus positive, 10, positive x negative. minus 10 equals plus or minus 5. The absolute value does not equal plus or minus. The insides, the innards, would be equal to plus or minus. So that's it better be. There is one thing that we need to know about any of these guys to know what the absolute values. Isolate the absolute value. Isolate. What does isolate mean? Get it by itself. All of the properties that we wrote had the absolute value by itself, so you have to do that. If you don't, guess what you get to be? Wrong. Good job, guys. Good job. If I take the absolute value of 3x plus 7, minus 6 is equal to 13. What am I going to do here? Move the 6. I've got to move the 6. Mm -hmm. Remember when we had the square root property? You had to get the square by itself before you did the square root of both sides with the plus or minus? Same thing happens here. You have to get the absolute value by itself. So if I add the 6 over, I get, I still have the absolute value of 3x plus 7, but what does it equal? It equals 19. So then how do I finish solving this guy? Do we have to divide by 3? Not yet. You have to <laughs> separate and get your two equations first, which means I have to do what? 3x plus 7 equals 19. Right, we know that the inside of this absolute value is going to equal 19, or, for it to be a true statement, the inside of this stuff has to equal a negative 19, right? Notice what we're doing. We're, we're taking something that's complicated and we just keep undoing it piece by piece until we get down to something that we know. So how do you solve this guy? So 3x is equal to 12, which means x equals what? 4. What about over here? 3x equals what? negative 26 and then x equals negative 26 thirds. So these are our two solutions. Questions about that? Are there going to be any restricted values? Are there going to be restricted values for these? There should not be. Just like when we were solving regular quadratic equations, we didn't have anything that was restricted. Things that are going to cause us restrictions will be even indexed radicals, fractions, 
But if I'm dealing with things that are quadratic, things that are polynomial, I shouldn't have any restrictions on that. I shouldn't have restrictions on absolute value equations either. Now, there are some interesting situations that come up, but we don't have restricted values or extraneous solutions.